And I don't know where it's gonna go, but I wanna thank you all for your willingness to listen <laughs> to this crazy man <laughs> walking around. I am so excited that you're finally here, Mr. McCullough, to talk to us about Warren C. Coleman, the entrepreneur, uh, the, just the man that, that was once enslaved, then rose to prominence in our community in Concord, North Carolina, in Cabarrus County. So thank you for, for coming here. Um, as the leading expert of Warren C. Coleman's life and times, I really want to introduce you, if that's okay. I've been doing Black history since 1974. It's a long time. Cabarrus County, if you want to know about black history, talk to me. Mr. Norman J. McCullough, Sr., you are husband and father, and you earned your BA from Hunter College in New York City, followed by your master's degree from Columbia University's teaching college. And you spent several years working towards a doctoral degree. You started your professional career in public service as a federal employee working for the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare in New York City. You then continued your work with the New York City Board of Education and climbing that public service ladder, you took on the role of Director of Training for the City of New York and ultimately rounded out your career as the Deputy Director of the New York Housing Authority. You have generously applied your education degree and skills as an adjunct instructor at Cornell University and in your retirement years have continued your work as an educator after moving to North Carolina by teaching history at the local community college. You are the author of two influential books, one of which will be, we will be exploring today titled Warren Clay Coleman, the leader of the first black textile mill in America. So I just want to thank you for being here and, and to take this deep dive into the life of Warren C. Coleman and, um, and, and his ambition and his impact. Okay, Warren Clay Coleman uh, was born in 1849. He was the second son of Rufus Barringer and Roxana Coleman. He was a young man trying to make it uh, in this world. He was born into slavery, uh, chattel slavery in America. And so with him and his brother and his mother, he was trying to see what he could do to live. So he um, was born in Concord, North Carolina, as I said, in 1849. And he uh, grew up and learned about uh, what was happening in North Carolina before the Civil War. So his life was such that he couldn't do a lot of things as a slave, but he tried to learn as much as possible. Now his father, Rufus Barringer, was a uh, descendant from many Barringers who settled in Mount Pleasant, North Carolina. And they were uh, people of German descent. And so his father uh, was coming from that uh, family. And his mother, as a uh, slave, was uh, basically living next to him with her master. Her master was William Coleman, okay? And both William Coleman and Rufus Coleman were attorneys. They were able to function in Concord at a very, very high level, okay? In fact, uh, Mr. Coleman, Warren C. Coleman's father was the mayor of Concord at one time. And so uh, this family was not uh, unusual in that um, oftentimes, um, Americans, white male Americans, would impregnate um, African women, and then their descendants would have to function in the society. After the Civil War, Thomas apparently left Concord and went to Georgia, and Warren remained in Concord. And so his first uh, activity 
as a young man was to go off to Howard University. He went to Howard University to get some basic skills, basic knowledge about what was happening here in America. But he didn't stay uh, too long. He stayed for about two years and came back to Concord and where he started his store. That was his first uh, enterprise into uh, capitalism where he was able to service people, both black and white, in the Concord Cabarrus area. And many people know him uh, because of his store. Now his father, who um, eventually became a uh, general in the Civil War on the Confederate side, uh, the record shows that he gave a Warren some property. So although he didn't fully acknowledge both of his sons, that is uh, Rufus, he apparently, according to the record, was able to give Warren property so that he could start uh, his activity in the area of real estate. So he became an entrepreneur in that regard. And with uh, real estate being his primary function, he was uh, able to become a very wealthy uh, person uh, in the Concord Cabarrus community. It is very important for people to know about Mr. Coleman, his life and times, and what he was able to achieve as an individual uh, former enslaved person after the Civil War, what he was able to achieve in spite of the conditions he was living with. His life is an example of many uh, African Americans who were enslaved and they were able to overcome their conditions. He started off as a young man uh, living in Concord, North Carolina with his brother, his mother, his father, and related family members, both black and white. And it's very important to understand that this story is very similar to other stories. We have the story of the third president, Thomas Jefferson, and uh, his slave, uh, Sally Hemings. So this is something that has occurred in many aspects in many places in our country. So he uh, wanted uh, to be successful. And with the help of his family and other uh, members, uh, people in the community, he was able to acquire the skills to own, um, sell, and otherwise be uh, an entrepreneur in the real estate area. He had uh, close to 100 homes in what is now called the Logan area. And with those homes, he was able to house people who would then go on to work in his textile mill, which uh, is a now 196,000 square feet. It is an awesome uh, building uh, where with him and other uh, African-Americans, many of them former slaves, they were able to build uh, this uh, property and allow and enable um, people, but Mr. Coleman, because African Americans were excluded from many of these um, uh, positions, was able to give uh, a great sacrifice to himself and his wealth and um, his ability to function because he was a victim of discrimination. He was a victim of racism. And so he was trying to make a difference for his people. Why is it important for educators and school systems to know about uh, Mr. Coleman? It's important because we are living in a multicultural, uh, multiracial society. This is a story of a man who was enslaved, who was biracial, and he tried to make a difference 
for all of us, especially uh, those people living in the South who were facing uh, the Industrial Revolution. Uh, his time was in the uh, late uh, 1800s, um, where uh, people were trying to cope. Uh, so it's important for our young people especially to know who this man was so that they can also strive to do something very productive with their lives and make a difference for society. What is it to be an American? And who is an American? These are things I talk about with my students at the college. Uh, who is an American? And why, and why is it important to know the past? It's important because in order to move into the future, you need to know the past.